another solid week for the markets. The S&P closed up about 1%, the NASDAQ up 2 small caps up 1 and international equities did well as well. Essentially, we had 134 S&P reports this week, and for the most part, they were very good. Large mega cap companies like Alphabet, Meta, Microsoft, and Intel all reported better than expected results. We heard about pricing power from Procter & Gamble. We know the airlines continue to do well. The banks set a firm tone at the beginning of earnings season. So when you look at the data, Essentially, the beat rates are a little bit above average. Uh, The revenue beats are a little bit below average, but all in all, a much better than feared earnings report season. In the case of like an Alphabet and a Meta, we're talking more of ad sales, I guess, because it's way too early for anything AI related. Right. Uh, Meta had better than expected growth in user numbers and revenue per user. So that was good. In addition, they've been cutting costs. You know, people were very concerned about their expenditures in the metaverse a year ago. They've dramatically pulled back on those expenditures. So they've done quite well. And then Google had really strong ad sales. Search accelerated nearly 300 basis points, a 5% year-on-year. YouTube was strong, and cloud revenue growth of 28% year-on-year was another bright spot. You know, Microsoft never used to really be this burner of a company or a stock, but they've been on a tear, haven't they? Well, there's a lot of AI enthusiasm around Microsoft, but their Azure business, which is their web services division where they compete against Amazon primarily, has been really strong. It was up 27% year on year. And this is a big company. So when you're posting year on year growth rates of 27%, you're doing something right. In addition, the other thing that the Microsoft CEO said was he was talking about data. And so when you think about AI, we don't necessarily know who the big winner is going to be on the back end, but you do know that data is necessary. So you want to focus on companies that are monetizing data. NVIDIA being a prime example. How many of these companies are going to need to pour enormous amounts of money into the development of their AI? And is that a drag on earnings? Well, I think it could be ultimately... Again, you know, it does benefit larger companies because the expenditures associated with that and actually training your data. Remember, you've got to catalog your data in order to build AI that can help you improve your business processes. That does require a significant investment. So in some ways, you could say the impact is going to be more long dated, not right now, but over time. The Fed decision on Wednesday, story, non-story about we definitely saw it coming. Well, it was as expected. They did raise 25 basis points. Powell suggested that they are going to be even more focused on the data because they understand that monetary policy acts with a lag and they only began raising rates March of last year. So the lag effects have yet to be felt. But with this strong economy, the strong labor market and the like, I think the expectation is they may continue to hike rates, but will be based on the data. We do expect to see some sort of uptick in inflation in the coming months because gasoline prices are much stronger. Oil prices as well are up. Iron ore futures are up. So there's a lot of commodity rebounding in terms of price. So the good news on inflation continues to be a disinflationary trend, but there are going to be hiccups along the way. In our final minute, let's talk about PCE. What is that and what did we see and why does that matter? Well, on Friday, you know, we had a kind of a tough day on Thursday where we opened, made new highs and then closed very weak. But there were three good economic data points that we saw on Friday. One was PC. That's the the Fed's preferred inflation gauge. It came in at 3.8 versus a 4% expectation. So that suggested that inflation is going in the right direction. In addition, we saw the jobless claims were a little bit weak. And also, earlier in the week, we got a very strong GDP report up 2.4%. Now, I don't know many economists who at the beginning of the second quarter thought GDP would be that strong. 